Hi, this is Josh Hines. I want to share just a quick business building tip. It, I think it'll be helpful, especially for, certainly not limited to, small business owners and sales professionals. One of the things I'm doing when I'm, it happens a lot when I'm doing some consulting and things, I'm, I'm reminded of one particular story where I went in and I was working with a new person that had taken over a territory, a salesperson who was taking over a new territory. And he was doing all the normal things, getting out into the community, meeting with other business owners. He was doing everything and he was making progress, you know, with his sales and building that territory back up. It had fallen off a little bit from the previous representative that he had taken it over from. But what was interesting in our conversation, one thing that was obvious that he was missing, well, it was obvious to me, it wasn't to him, was that he wasn't looking back at the previous customers that were serviced. And one area in particular that I think he was really missing out on was that he wasn't looking at the customers that did business with that company and had stopped for whatever reason. And I think that happens a lot in in, in businesses, especially with small business owners, we sort of look at everything going forward. We say, okay, we focus on getting the customer, getting the sale. Maybe we even do the right thing and focus on building that relationship. But what happens is something, maybe it's out of our control, or maybe we just plain drop the ball on that customer or client. And then all of a sudden, instead of trying to create instead of trying to get that relationship back and build it back, because everybody falls down a little bit every once in a while. It's not a matter of whether or not we fall back, it's what we do to correct it when we need to. So, back to the story of our salesperson. So rather than him looking at those people that once were happy customers, used to do business with the company, and trying to get those people back as well, nobody had ever done that. So I encouraged him, you know, we got him to look into the files and. Of course, they're just like everywhere. I bet you you have the same thing in your business, or if you're if you're in sales, you have the same thing with customers that are just sitting there that for whatever reason chose to do business with somebody else. Um, again, it may have been something that you, somebody somewhere terribly dropped the ball. The point is, though, once upon a time they were happy with your company, or they did business with your company, and so there's an opportunity if you're willing to have the courage to do it. And I'm not saying that everybody is. But if you're willing to be humble, eat a little humble pie, as we say my way, and just go back to that customer and say, you know, something, let's, let's do it two different ways. Let's say, for example, we made the mistake. Come back and say, you know, I know this is a terrible situation. Um, I can't really do anything to change it. I, I apologize sincerely, but we'll do whatever we have to do. And, you know, what can we do to make it up and just sort of, as the term says, throw yourself on the sword. Maybe that's not the best example, but throw yourself at their mercy. And you know, and you can't really be attached to the outcome. You, you, and also I want to say, if you don't have the systems in place and you're not prepared to do the right thing and make it up however you can, then this is not going to be an approach for you because this isn't a tactic to get the customer back and then all of a sudden fall back on what, what the problem was. So that's not going to be a port for you. The same, now the other route would be Let's say you're a salesperson or somebody along the way caused a mistake and you generally don't know what it is. You just come back to them and say, you know, Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so, once upon a time, you did business with us and I don't know what happened. I can only assume that we dropped the ball somewhere. I apologize. <laughs> is there, you know, would you mind sharing us where we fell down? Because at some point, we love to win your business back, but, mo but we also want to make sure that we don't make the same mistake with our existing customers. And then just wait for them to answer. Again, this is not a, this is not a tactic or strategy to, you know, to manipulate them in any kind of negative way. You just really want to know. Because it's like the, it's like the old saying goes, if, if you don't ask, you don't know. And so you generally wait for their answer. And a lot of times, you might even find that it wasn't anything bad. A lot of times, maybe it was something is not following up, or maybe it was that they had been a loyal customer of yours, and you, and nobody along the way ever asked them what you're asking them now, and that's enough to shift that focus. So this is just a quick idea. I'll just leave you with another thought to kind of build on what I've been saying. Most people, at least we've heard it in theory and read it in books, and so we understand on that level that it takes a whole lot less resources to sell again 
and to share again what we have to offer with somebody who's already done business with us and, and as my friend Bob Berg would say, knows, likes, and trusts us already than to go out in the marketplace and get a new customer or client. But yet every single day as business owners, sales professionals, you know, that's exactly what we do instead of investing and putting more of our resources in developing the relationships with the people we've already got, we go out in the marketplace and we try to bring more in. And that's a wonderful thing to do. But what about if we gave at least half that time that we're spending bringing new people in and we spent time cultivating and developing those relationships with the people that we've got? Be some powerful results, I can promise you. Now, I wish you all the best. And remember, it's your life. Live big.